understand. Yes, you know, we get so, I, well, in, uh, in my age, forgetful. Last week I didn't ask us to rise, but you know, you get rusty. Haven't done this in a while, you get a little rusty, but you know, God is good. Psalms of 100 Division, let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving, and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Exodus 20, chapter verse 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that was in thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth to see in all of them their ears and rested the Sabbath day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day Hallowed it. Let us bow our heads. Gracious Lord, once again, we're so thankful that you watched over us last night and allow us to rise once again to see another blessed Sabbath day. We thank you, Lord, for just bringing us through another week of toil, of, of, of ups and downs, Lord, but you're able to, to see us through. So we just thank you once again to be able to assemble ourselves to worship you in spirit and truth. Bless us now, we pray, as we continue to to worship you. In Jesus' name, everyone say amen, and God bless you all. Real good. Good morning and happy Sabbath. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen.
That was some good stuff, amen? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was some good stuff. They, they would have a crippled man making steps, amen? Amen. That was some good stuff. That was some good stuff. Uh, good to see you this morning. Good to see you this morning. Good morning, everybody. All right. How are we doing today? Oh, you are looking beautiful right now. If you don't believe me, just come up here and look at yourself down there and you will see what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, let, let me give you some announcements real quick and then I will get in the word for today. All right, first, it was good to see the young people in their Sabbath school this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we want to thank the teachers. I saw some teachers who have volunteered to work with the Sabbath school. Listen, if you love young people, if you love kids, you can go in the back and work with them. They would appreciate your company. Amen. 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 Uh, ushers, you're doing a fantastic job. It's good to see a smiling face at the door in the morning. Amen. Amen. We want to say a special good morning to our ushers. Uh, AY program this afternoon at 5 p.m. Sister Cummins, will it be at the church or on Zoom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever you're ready. They haven't given me permission for that, but I'm going to overstep. I'll apologize later. Whenever you're ready for AY, sister, I'm sure we can facilitate AY at the church. Amen? Yes. I think we can do that. Amen. Amen. We're just going home to sleep and sin anyway. <clears throat> We can come back for AY. Tithe and offering. Sister Brown said, speak for myself. Tithe and offering. Uh, remember, you can drop your tithe and offering at the door. A usher will be at the door or in the mailbox. There's a mailbox that you can drop your tithe and offering. And, and then finally, praise team. We want to thank you for your musical contribution. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What would church be like without music? Lord, you are good, and your mercy endure it forever. Praise the Lord. All right, I think I got about 40 minutes, and I think I got a 40-minute sermon to preach today. So without delay, I invite you to turn your Bibles with me to our scripture reading. Our scripture reading is taken from John chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. When you're there, just say amen. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. Remember, our theme for 2021 is divine communication. For the first six months of 2021, we look at the theme, listen to him. Listen to him. And for the next six months, myself and the elders will be preaching on the theme, talking to him. Talking to him. First, we have to listen, and then we talk. Amen. You know, sometimes we got this all twisted. We talk, and then we listen. Amen. But we want to listen, and then we talk. Talking to him. Scripture reading, John chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. Before I get in my sermon, let me tell you something. I was watching the live feed last week with Elder Bonner preaching the word, and the church was empty. Mm -hmm. The church was empty. Where all of you guys were? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing, I'm gonna start doing attendance on you guys now. Amen. Amen. All right, John chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. When you're there, just say amen. You there? All right, good, we're there. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit, and he trims and cleans every branch that produces fruit so that they may produce even more. 
So ye are already clean because of the word I have spoken. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch cannot produce fruit alone, but must remain in the vine. In the same way, you cannot produce fruit alone, but must remain in me. The King James said, abide. Verse 5, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If any remain in me, and I in them, they produce much fruit. But without me, they can do Nothing. I want to read that again. But without me, they can do nothing. I want to read that again. But without me, they can do nothing. The King James said, without me, you can do nothing. Caption of my sermon this morning is, we ain't all that. We ain't all that. Father, I want to thank you so much for this opportunity to stand before your people. Imperfect as we are, we are your people. And you have loved us with an everlasting love and with loving kindness you have drawn us unto yourself. I thank you, God, for inspiring me with a word. Many times I have no idea what should what I should share with your people. But Holy Spirit is always faithful. And I just want to publicly thank you. Now, Lord, speak through me, not for me, but for your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. We ain't all that. We ain't all that. Indulge me for about five minutes. Allow me to go through the chronology of the creation story. And the Bible said in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of the water, and God said, let there be light. And there was light, the Bible said, and God saw the light that it was good. And the light he called day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. And then the Bible said God created the sky to separate the waters from above from the water that was beneath. And the evening and the morning was the second day. Hmm? And then God in his all power gather all the waters together under the sky and he called it sea and the dry land appear and he called it earth. And then God said let the dry land bring forth vegetation, herbs and fruit bearing seed. And it was so. And the evening. And the morning was the third day. And then God created two great light. The Bible said that the greater light rule over the day, which is the sun, and the lesser light rule over the night, which is the moon. And God used these two lights to govern time and season. And he created the stars also. And the evening and the morning was the fourth day. And then God said, Brother Brown, let the water bring forth birds and moving creatures and whales. And it was so. They came forward with life and vigor. And the evening and the morning was the what? Uh, somebody's paying attention. Then God said, let the earth bring forth cattle and creeping things and beasts. And it was so. Oh, this was on the sixth day now. And then when God finished Sister Terry creating the beasts and the cattle, 
then, then God paused in his creation and call an emergency board meeting. Just with the Father and with the Son and the Holy Ghost. How do I know that they call a board meeting? Because I read the minutes in Genesis chapter 1 and in Genesis chapter 2. Sister, Sister J, there was only one subject on the minute. Let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. That was the only discussion in the board meeting. You see, everything God created thus far, God spoke and it was done. Command and it stood fast. But for this agenda item, God condescended from his kingdom. God vacated his throne and stepped down in his creation to build something, to design something that was different. Let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness. That is in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 is a summary of creation. If you want to understand creation in details, you got to step over into Genesis chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Because in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, the Bible said that when God created or God designed man, he then breathed in his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Oh, oh, oh sister, sister, Tia, I get excited when I read Genesis 2, 7. Go ahead and ask me why. Thank you, Brother Brown. Thank you. Because, watch this, God created man dead. I know you missed that. That's all right. I, I want to go back and explore, Sister Terry, the Genesis creation story. Every form of life was created with life. Hmm? The birds were created with life. The fishes, the whales were created with life. The cattle were created with life. The beasts were created with life. But God created man lifeless. I'm going somewhere. You got to stay with me. Why did God create us dead? I want you to picture Adam now. Ellen White said in the book, early writings, that Adam was about 18 feet tall. Perfect in the image of God, but lifeless. Oh, let me share something with you. The reason why God created man lifeless was because man was so majestic that God wanted them to understand that they were not independent, but they were dependent from creation. Are you with me, somebody? You got to stay with me. I'm going somewhere. The question that I seek to answer today in my sermon is, why do we need to pray? When a child comes in the world, we see the reenactment of creation. Hmm? When you came in this world, I don't know what you look like. I don't care what you look like now, what you have accomplished. You came in the world the same way I came in the world. Hmm? Helpless and hopeless. Depending on somebody to give you some food, to wipe your butt, to wipe your snot from your nose. You couldn't do nothing for yourself because God wants you to understand that he created you not independent, but dependent. Huh? You got to say with me, somebody, why do we need to pray? Because God, the Bible said, breathe in Adam's the breath of life and Adam became a living soul. Let me share something with you. Do you know that the breath that you have don't belong to you? It was given to you by God. As a matter of fact, it's not given, but it's a loan. It's borrowed. 
So you can walk around acting as if you are the captain of your soul and the master of your destiny. But every time you breathe, you are reminded that you were created lifeless. And the life you have was given to you by someone else. If you don't believe me that your, your life is borrowed goods, you got to read uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 7. The Bible said when you die, creation reverses itself. The Bible said the body returned to the dust from whence it came and the breath, the roar, the life goes back to God because it wasn't yours. Belong to him and it goes back to him. In Acts chapter 17, Paul was at Mars Hill and he saw a altar, say the unknown God. And Paul decided to preach a sermon about the unknown God. And Paul said, listen brethren, let me tell you about this unknown God. He's the one that created heaven and earth. And in this unknown God, Acts chapter 17, 27, for in him we live and move and have our being. It's God that woke you up this morning. Started you on your and the life you have belonged to him. In Daniel chapter 5, when Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, Belshazzar, was acting a fool. God wrote on the wall and the prophet Daniel came in to interpret the writings on the wall. And this is what Daniel said to King Belshazzar. Daniel chapter 5 verse 22. Belshazzar, you already knew these things because you're a, descend you're a descendant of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Still, you have not been sorry for the things you have done. Instead, you have set yourself up against the God of heaven. You have drank wine from his vessels, the one that were brought from the temple in Jerusalem. You and your royal guests and your wives and your slave women, they drink wine from them and they praise the God of silver, of gold, of brass, of iron. And the God in whose life, in whose hand your life is, you have not regard. Daniel said, the God who have your breath in his hand, you have disregard. And that night, Nebuchadnezzar, grandson Belshazzar, died in the battle against the Medes and the Persian. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. We ain't all that. That's the reason why we got to pray. Hmm? That's the reason why we got to pray. Follow me in our scripture reading. I want to talk to you for a minute. Let me tell you before I step down in this scripture reading, I love you. Can I say that first? All right, that's all I want you to know. So let's go in our scripture reading. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. Jesus was about to die and he was sharing one of his final sermon brother Victor with his disciples now we could have talked about anything but for Jesus this topic was vital he looked at the disciples and he said I am the true vine and my father is the guard James said the husband man hmm? well, let's talk about the vine for a second you see the vine is source of nutrients for the branches the vine is connected to the root and the vine subtract nutrients from the root and the vine distribute that nutrients to the branches you see the branches cannot survive without the vine but the vine can survive without the branches you see 
branches are dependent on the vine, but the vine is independent of the branches. Are you with me, somebody? I want to inform you that the God we serve don't need you to be God. He's God all by himself. He can live without us, but we can't live without him. Because he's the one that keep our hearts beating 72 times per minute. So he said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. Watch this now, verse 2, I'm excited. Talking about the husband man. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. I told you I love you because I'm going somewhere. He cuts off every branch that does not produce fruit. Watch this now. And he trims or prune and clean every branch that produce fruits so they might produce more fruit. Oh, let me come down to your zip code real quick. Hmm? God said that there are some branches that are connected to the vine, that are wasting nutrients because they produce nothing but leaves. And he said that the husbandman, the gardener, which is the father, remove the branches that are unproductive. He cuts them off. You got to stay with me, somebody. God is merciful. God is patient. But there's a limit to God's mercy. And when you're in Jesus forever, but you ain't producing nothing, there's a time when God will separate himself from unproductive branches. He will cut them off. We, we call at the shaken period we call that the close of probation when God will say he that is filthy let him be filthy still I don't know about you but I don't want to be cut off so I got to bear some fruit and the Bible informs me that the first fruit of the spirit is love But watch this now. This is Hope New Jerusalem. The Bible said for the branches that are bearing fruit, he still cut them. <laughs> Woo, I'm excited. Elder Hicks, you, you felt that one. He still cut them, but he don't cut them off. He's just trimmed them so they can bear more. I want to talk to myself for a second. Ah. Uh, I'm just going to talk to myself for a second. God, I've been in the church now for 21 years. Since the age of 19, and I'm almost 41, Sister Terry. And Pastor McKenzie is just bearing one and two grapes. God is looking for a cluster. Hmm? But I ain't living the way I should live, so I'm just producing one and two. So every now and then, stay with me somebody, God got to take the knife and cut me a little bit. Cut away my distraction. Cut away my setting sin. Cut away my ambition. Cut away my selfishness. Because he wants Pastor McKenzie to bear more. I don't know about you, Sister Red, but I don't like when God is cutting me because it's very uncomfortable. I don't like when God is cutting me because it is very painful. But if that's the only way I can produce, then cut, Lord, cut. Slice, Lord, slice. It might be uncomfortable, but it's necessary. Some of you talking about you want to leave New Jerusalem when God is using New Jerusalem to cut you. So that you can bear more. Can I share something with you? You need hypocrites in the church. 
You need somebody to show you what you are not to be. That's all right. That's just my sermon. That's just my sermon. I love when the Lord is cutting us. We don't like it, but it's necessary because we can't bear more fruit unless we are cut. Some of us, we got a lot of leaf, but not a lot of fruit. We got one fruit for 19. We've been bearing one fruit every decade. Cut me, Lord, cut me. Mm -hmm. And the ones that bear, the Bible said he cut or he trims them so they can bear more. Let me jump in verse 3. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken unto you. Watch this now. Remain in me. I love this word. That is why I love this Bible. In the word abide, it uses the word remain. Do you know it's easy to go in and out of Jesus? Sister Man, I'm just talking to myself. It is easy to go in and out of Jesus on a weekly basis. It's easy to go in and out of Jesus on a daily basis. You know, some of us are Christian until somebody cut us the wrong way. And then we put our Christianity down right here. We go tell them a piece of our mind and then come back and pick up our Christianity and continue where we left off. It's easy to go in and out of Jesus, but the Bible encourages us to remain in him. To abide in him. To stay in him. He said if you remain in me. I will remain in you. A branch cannot produce fruit alone. It must remain in the vine. Talk to me somebody. A branch cannot produce fruit alone. It must remain in the vine. The same way you cannot produce alone, remain in me. We're talking about talking to Jesus. Have you ever feel as if Jesus is not there? Hmm? Talking to myself now. Have you ever feel disconnected to God before? Talking to myself now. Do you know that communication equals connection? Huh? Do you know that? I don't need to know who you are. If you can show me the person that you feel connected to the most in your life, I can show you the person that you communicate with the most in your life. It's not rocket science. Communication equals connection. If you don't feel connected to God the way you should, it simply means that you have not been communicating with God the way you should. That's it. Hmm? That's all it is. Communication equals connection. Hmm? And, 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 and if you were part of the marriage seminar, we learned that you cannot communicate. Even when Sister McKenzie is giving me the silent treatment, she is communicating. She's trying to tell me, I'm upset with you. You better sleep with one eye open tonight. That's what she's trying to say. You cannot communicate. When we go to God every morning, we are saying, Lord, I can't make it through the day without you. That is why I'm coming. And when we fail to go to God in the morning, we are saying, Lord, I don't need you today. Ellen White said when we fail to consecrate ourselves to God in the morning, we are tempting the devil to tempt us. We are telling God that, that you are not relevant to me today. So I don't need to pray. I don't need to talk to you. I am strong enough to face the devil by myself. Some of us do that drive through prayer. Thank you, Lord. Bless me. Bless my children. Amen. Let me share something with you. Weak communication equals weak relationship. 
Let me talk to some Adventists for a second. Fake communication. Oh, great God of Jacob, Isaac, Rachel, Rebecca, all of these four. Why, why is that all in your prayer? Hmm? Fake communication equals fake relationship. Occasional communication equals occasional relationship. Hmm? Stay with me, somebody. Mechanical communication equals mechanical relationship. Sabbath communication equals Sabbath relationship. But if you want a real relationship with God, then you got to develop some real communication. And Jesus said, I want you to talk to me in such a way that you should only be in your closet sometimes. Because when you're around people, you talk differently. But when it's just the two of us, you can talk to me as you talk to a friend. And that's what I want to be, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and, and grief to bear, what a privilege to carry. So if you're not satisfied with your relationship with God, check your connection. Old folks used to say, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintless cry. We'll answer by and by. So, so watch this now, I'm almost finished. Jesus is telling the disciples, Sister Hicks, that they need to abide in him. Do you know what that means? If they were already abiding in him, it would not be necessary for him to tell them to abide in him. Are you following me, somebody? Are we reading the same Bible? It simply meant that the disciples, Sister Will, were not abiding in Christ. And Christ was about to die, Sister Jay. And he was very concerned about their spiritual life. So he was saying, you need to start abiding in me. Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1, all the way through, saw a valley of dry bones. And God said to the prophet, the dry bones represent my people and my church. The reason why they're dead and dry is because they're disconnected from the vine. The source of life and vitality. So let me talk to somebody for a minute. Is it possible that God's church is disconnected from God himself. Is it possible that God's branches are disconnected from the vine, which is Christ? Somebody asked me a question once. They said, how can church folks be so mean and callous and vindictive and unforgiving? That's an easy question. Because they're not connected to the God that they're preaching about. Is it possible that we are preaching about a God that we are not connected to? I'm almost finished. I think I got about five minutes. Let, let me wrap this thing up real quick. Let me jump to verse five. Can I jump to verse five real quick? I'm going to let you go. Your mind is on your veggie steak. Verse four, remain. In me and I will remain in you. A branch cannot produce fruit alone but must remain in the vine. In the same way you cannot produce fruit by yourself. You must remain in me. Now watch this. Now verse 5 is the punchline. I am the vine and you are the branches. If any remain in me and I remain in them, they produce much fruit but without me but without me oh without me you can do nothing I'm done I'm done what do you want church or relationship 
You don't need God to come to church on Sabbath morning. You don't need God to have religion. But you need God to have a relationship with him. And he wants you to know that you can't do nothing without him. Unless we are a body. You see, we ain't all that. We are weak and frail and broken. But if we abide in the vine, we can bring forth much fruit. Come on, somebody. You got to stay with me. If we just stay, Brother Therese, if I can just stay in Jesus, it's going to be all right. It don't matter what's going on in New Jerusalem. If I can just stay in Jesus, it don't matter what's going on in my marriage. If I can just stay in Jesus, it don't matter what's going on in the, on the job. If I can just stay in Jesus, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Communication equals connection. I have a question for you as I close. How is your prayer life? Mm -hmm. How is it? Are you talking to him the way you should? Are you connected to him the way you should? I have a sermon I'm working on, and I'm going to give you a preview. We are like a gun, a loaded forty-five. I love guns. I ain't going to shoot none of you, though. Don't worry. <laughs> Loaded 45. We can do so much damage if we're in the wrong hands. But in the right hand, we can do so much good. It's not about who you are. It's about who you're in. Hmm? It's about who you're in. Your problem is not your sin or your shortcoming. Your problem and my problem is a connection issue. Hmm? My wife and I, we had some internet problems. And they sent the technicians, Elder. And the technician, they came out, the first thing they checked, uh, uh, Sister and Brother Dixon, was the connections just to make sure everything is connected. And once the connection is set, Sister Red, everything else is okay. Father, we are tired of being disconnected from you. And when we are disconnected with, from you, Lord, we, we get ugly. We get jealous. We get envious. When we're disconnected from you, we lie, we cheat, we steal. When we're disconnected from you, God, we are mean and callous. When we're disconnected from you, we even surprise ourselves sometimes. We do things that we thought we would never do. We say things we thought we would never say. The problem is not our nature, Lord. The problem is our connection. Father, we want to be reconnected with you this morning. We don't want to be connected with the church because the church is fleeting. The church is imperfect. But you are righteous. You are faithful. The church can give us the power we need, Lord. We need something more. We need you. Because we want to bear fruits. We want to be loving. We want to be patient. We want to have joy. So reconnect us this morning so that we will receive the power from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. And Amen.
let me mention two things before I leave one is I will be with you for the next three consecutive Sabbaths well the next two consecutive Sabbaths counting this one it will be three so next week on the following Sabbath I will be with you I also forget to mention that my mother-in-law and my father-in-law is here with us today all the way from Maryland so we want to we want to thank the Lord for them see you this afternoon at AY at 5 o'clock and then see you next week for divine worship and for church service right here